본론부터 바로 말씀드릴게요. 비트 같은 경우 이제 여기에서 먼저 공유한 것처럼 상승 관점은 계속해서 유지하고 있습니다. 지금 현재 가장 중요하게 보고 있는 부분은 이 상단 추세선 도달인데 어제 먼저 공유한 것처럼 1차 목표가를 109.3에서 109.6K 부근까지 보고 있고 이때 물량 전부 다 정리할 예정입니다. 그 이후부터는 이제 추세선 돌파 여부에 따라 관점이 바뀔 건데 한시간 봉 차트상 109.3K 돌파에 캔들이 마감할 시 이때 다시 한번 롱 진입 반대로 캔들 마감이 109.3K 저항이 막힌다면 쇼 진입으로 접근할 생각입니다. 개인적으로 지금 당장은 하단 추세선 하방 이탈이 발생되지 않는 이상 계속해서 상승의 관점으로 볼 생각이고요. 그 이후 관점 그리고 후속 브리핑은 고정 댓글 링크 통해 들어오셔서 체크하시면 됩니다. 이번 비트코인 강세장에서 주목할 만한 점은 조정의 깊이와 빈도입니다. 2022년 11월 이후 시작된 상승 사이클에서 30% 이상 깊은 조정이 단두 차례였습니다. 2024년 8월, 2025년 4월 이렇게 두 차례였고 이후 가격은 생각했던 것보다 굉장히 빠르게 회복을 하면서 당시 새로운 고점을 형성해 왔습니다. 그외 대부분의 조정은 마이너스 10% 내외의 제한적인 낙폭에 머물렀고 상승 구조를 재정비하는 국지적 조정의 성격이 강했습니다. 특히나 눈에 띄는 점은 최근으로 갈수록 조정의 폭이 줄어들고 있다는 사실입니다. 이것은 시장의 내성이 강화되고 있으며 투자자층이 점점 더 성숙해지고 있다는 증거로 볼수 있죠. 현재 기준으로는 실시간 조정폭 약 마이너스 4.7% 168시간 기준 SMA 조정폭 약 마이너스 7% 정도가 됩니다. 이 수치는 100K에서 106K 구간에서의 가격 안정성을 뒷받침하며 시장이 다음 방향성을 모색하는 중간 단계에 진입했음을 시사합니다. 특히나 며칠 전 98K 구간에서 명확한 매수세 유입이 포착이 됐고 이로 인해 강세장의 핵심 모멘텀은 여전히 유효한 상태입니다. 지금까지 계속해서 반복되는 구조는 깊은 조정, 외지 구간, 추세 재개인데 이번 사이클에서도 유효하게 작동하고 있습니다. 최근 조정이 과거보다 약고 빠르게 마무리되는 경향이 강화되고 있다는 점은 아무래도 신규 고점 돌파 가능성을 높이는 요소로 충분히 작용할 수 있겠죠. 이제 어제 여기에 공유를 한 것처럼 저는 롱 포지션 진입 후 계속해서 유지 중에 있습니다. 이 이후 후속 브리핑은 모두 여기에 공유를 해드릴 거고요. 놓치지 말고 같이 잘 대응해서 이번 변동성 아무 문제 없이 수익으로 한번 가져가 보겠습니다. 오늘 인터뷰 영상은 프레드 크루거 영상인데 프레드 크루거는 이제 수학자이자 금융시장 분석가로 잘 알려져 있습니다. 오늘 영상은 소액 비트코인 투자자라면 꼭 봐야 하는 이유를 주제로 준비를 했고 바로 보시죠. Bitcoin is on a path to 10x over the next 5 to 10 years and probably 100x over the next 10 to 20 years. This is an amazing, amazing asset. And all you have to do in order to get this appreciation is buy it and wait. That's it. All excited about Bitcoin and everything, but You know, if you look at statistically, right, it, it, Bitcoin follows this thing called the power law, right? And, you know, as much as we like to think the volatility is going to suddenly explode, actually volatility is going down, right? And Bitcoin's sort of grinding up at the, you know, 5.8 power on the log log space. And that, that's kind of what Bitcoin's doing. And, you know, where is it right now? It's exactly on its power law trend, you know? Now, could it rip to 2, 300? I think it could, you know, we, we're not anywhere kind of crazy. We're not in any kind of crazy overvaluation now. But, you know, when you sort of say two to three million dollar Bitcoin, uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think that, that the history of the asset does not suggest that we're going to two to three million dollar Bitcoin anytime soon. Uh, I, think, oh, I think we might get to a million dollar well, yeah, Bitcoin. I wasn't guessing years, that, just to no. be clear. But, you know, hopefully. Uh, but I'm just saying that the... the the stats on how this thing actually evolves and for every, you know, for all the, the really excitement that we all see and, and everything, there's always a lot of skepticism, right? And there's a lot of, I don't believe it. It's 200,000 is way too expensive. You know, this is way. And so we're climbing this wall of worry and the rate of climb of that wall of worry is a log log uh, progression with a 5.8 power. And so, Uh, you know, so, so Fred, do, Fred, yeah. do you think do you think that we won't um, we won't sort of reach or or fall into an S curve? Do you think it just follows the power law all the way up and we grind, or do you think there's a potential that we are going to be at the beginning of an S curve at some point I, and then? I, go? I think I think all the statistical evidence suggests that we're in a power law. That's what I'd say. Now, I'd like to believe that we are in an S curve. I'd love I'd love to believe that, but I don't think so. I actually think that. In my gut feel is actually we're for the next 20 years we're in a power law now that power there's nothing to sneeze at right that power law takes us to a million takes us to 10 million 
It's just, it takes us there a little slower than people think. And I mean, I just remember when last year back in, you know, March, April, and David Bailey was in our, one of these spaces and says, was like, we're going to a million this year, Fred, like for sure. Well, we're not going to a million this year. I mean, here we are, we're almost in July. We're not in a million. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to 200,000 this year, but I don't think we're getting to a million. Thomas, what do you think? I think that when you talk about going to a million or 2 million, you have to also think about, I would just start with this thing. You have to think about what else happens if that were to happen. I think it's theoretically possible at some point in the future, but I just look at the way the world is changing. And I would just say, we sit here in 2025 and I project out to five years to 2030 as the next sort of iconic uh, milestone um, in our society. If you're, you know, the, the back end of the fourth turning, all of the above, but you know, post Trump, there's a whole bunch of reasons why 2030 is a, is a thing to look at. I don't believe the world in 2030 will be recognizable from here. Uh, so we're going to go through so much change that even when you talk about a million dollar Bitcoin, I'm not even sure what that means in society. Um, what I would say is, you, and you don't have to have, you can have an opinion about it today, but you don't have to act on it today. What what I think uh, the, uh, the the range of outcomes here is we end up at the, at the end of the year at 130, which is a nice return. That would be anemic but very positive, or we end up over 200,000. And, and, and I think that that's the range of where we could end up. Now, could we blow off above that? There could be, I think if that's the, if we blow up above that, then there's a dislocation in the capital market. So your uh, three or $400,000 Bitcoin isn't worth what you think it is. It's not 400,000 in, in today's system. Something will happen. Um, but I just think, you know, it's nice to think about it, but I, I just think, you know, I'd rather see a consistent, 40, 50% Kager for the next few years. That would be fantastic. Yeah, the, the problem I have with the power law stuff is, first of all, first of all to me, the, the range is is massive. Uh, you know, you're talking a couple standard deviations, five standard deviations wide. You know, it's like me saying that the weather in San Diego next year is going to be somewhere between zero degrees and 120 degrees. But also, the, it also assumes that the power law assumes a stable dollar. Uh, and if the stable dollar is what we're assuming, then I don't feel like we're really Bitcoiners. At some point, that dollar is going to have to inflate away. Now, if you want to use the power law against some basket of goods or some other metric other than the dollar, uh, what happens when we hit a, 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 Weimar, Weimar, a, a global Weimar Republic-like uh, inflection point, uh, like Ray Dalio has talked about, like the brick print, like Lawrence Lepard has talked about? Um, that's my, that's my, you know, I have a couple issues with the, with the power law, but the one that really sticks out to me is that we're basing it against an ever inflating dollar. Uh, I really am a believer that not only are we going to have an S curve adoption eventually and an S curve price, but really it's going to be more of a J term uh, or a, a, a J curve uh, that we'll see, which is essentially a vertical line because nobody will want those dollars anymore. Now we can very much disagree on the timeline. I'm I'm with you, Fred. I don't think any of this happens really anytime soon. Uh, I think we're here in this in this space, and anybody in here is well above anybody else but go outside whatever room you're in right now go to a nearby place to have lunch go to a uh, you know high school reunion or wherever and start talking about bitcoin you very quickly realize you're the only person that really understands it talks about it thinks about it all the time so i think we're still a long way off but eventually bitcoin hits this j curve where only people want is bitcoin and so if you're still pricing it in dollars the dollar's not gonna be worth anything uh and just a question of when that actually happens that's the math you know you can sort of say the math is a math look uh, our friend Money or Debt just put out a piece yesterday, and uh, look, the the uh, the power law holds also with with respect to gold, right? So, you know, uh, you you can you can sort of take out the dollar effect in the calculation. A, a power law cool, but power it makes law. way more sense. I agree, Fred. I think a power law that's measured in something other than dollars makes a lot more sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a it's a very stable power law with a five exponent to gold. Okay, so you know, there you go. Uh, you know, so I, I don't think that's really the problem. I think the question is how long, how fast does this change happen? I, I just, I don't think we're going to go into the J curve, you know, hyper uh, moon landing, uh, moon takeoff, starship uh, finance. We're all getting becoming billionaires overnight. I don't think that's happening, but you know, I, we'll I see. Think you, need a, you need a catalyst. If it does happen, I'm, I'm all for it. I think you need a catalyst. I, I, I would say that the, our, our next major, I would say, macro milestone in terms of valuation is uh, for Bitcoin to flip gold. Um, and gold's at like 22, 23. Uh, it would probably, that's like a 10x. Um, 
but as, as Bitcoin approaches gold, gold keeps going up. So I think you might be looking at 15X from here, 1.5 million roughly to flip it. Now, what could make that happen uh, uh, rapidly would be a crisis in the gold market. Now, so the, the gold market is highly repothecated. People uh, do not do not take physical delivery. Really, it's only nation states uh, and, and large entities can take delivery at scale. Uh, but you can imagine uh, a BRICS um, versus the West tension where you see a crisis in the gold market. Uh, and if that happens, I, I could see a rapid rotation for people to move uh, to Bitcoin with very large capital pools. And the thing we know about Bitcoin is uh, the multiplier effect is a function of two variables, uh, the, the capital coming into the, the asset class and the speed at which it comes. Uh, you know, if you take 10 billion to fresh capital and do a smash buy, the price is going to moon. Uh, if you do it over the course of a month, it has less of an, of an effect. So uh, I, I could see that happening, a crisis in the gold market, which would facilitate an adoption. But then the issue really becomes for us as Bitcoiners is, will the price sustain? Uh, you know, I, I think we will likely see a blow off top at some point. Uh, and then, you know, the frothiness, people have to decide whether or not they want to stay in it uh, or take profits and try to buy it back lower. You know, that's individual choice on whether you think you can time the market that way. Bitcoin is showing strength today as global tensions ease and big investors jump back in. Recent calm between major countries has improved market confidence, making people more willing to invest in risky assets like crypto. At the same time, big firms are buying large amounts of Bitcoin, showing strong belief in its future. There's also talk that the U.S. central bank might soon lower interest rates, which would make Bitcoin even more attractive. Altogether, these events are creating a positive mood in the market, pushing Bitcoin higher and bringing back optimism among traders and long-term holders. If you found this update helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel.